the resurrection is reliable and trustworthy, it should cause you then to rejoice at that amazing gospel that God has completely forgiven your sins if you have repented and put your trust in the risen Savior. I'm glad that I have the privilege of defending the resurrection of Jesus. And my thesis is simply this, that all honest historians should believe in the resurrection of Jesus. You say, oh yeah, you believe the Bible is the word of God. Yes, I do, but that's not the basis of my lecture today. I'm simply saying that what you should do is to think historically and use the same methods of interpretation and Thank evidence you, that secular historians use, and you'll conclude that Jesus Christ rose from the dead without any question about it. No bones about it, I might say. Right? Now, what I'm going to present to you, whether you're here as a skeptic, as an atheist, my good friend Rob Sherman, at the end of the day, he should say, yes, Jesus rose from the dead because the methodology you used is not based on any presuppositions. It is only considering evidence that secular historians all agree to. Number one is the primary, the primary witnesses. You read, for example, John's experience as given in his gospel. They didn't know that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Jesus is crucified. He's put in a tomb. They go there and uh, the women go there. They're going to anoint his body. And lo and behold, what happens? Suddenly they discover that the stone is rolled away and the tomb is empty. Peter and John go into the tomb and indeed they verify that the tomb of Jesus is empty. And they think to themselves, I wonder what happened. Maybe, maybe somebody stole the body. But afterwards, they meet Jesus personally. And Jesus says to them, touch me. I'm not a vision, I'm not a spirit, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Therefore, I am authentic. And they met Jesus. Some of you say, oh yeah, but you know, you know, and I don't mind, by the way, if you interrupt me here with a question. But will some there of them, be capitalists in heaven? Uh, yeah, and if will not, there be capitalists will in heaven? Hey, next year forward. I'll speak on capitalists in heaven. Some of them will be, some of them won't be. A lot of socialists will be in both places too, because it depends on what you do with Jesus Christ. That's the central issue that we're discussing here today. You think, for example, hey, you think, for example, of uh, a man like Thomas. He was a hard-headed fisherman. You remember Jesus revealed himself to the, his disciples and later on Thomas. Thomas uh, doesn't believe them because he's not there. And he says, unless I shall see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails, I will not believe. And later on Jesus says, Thomas, I acquiesce to your doubts. Jesus reveals himself to him and says, reach hither your hand and put it into my side and, and look at the nail prints on my hand and do not be faithless but believing. And Thomas says, the Greek text says, Thomas says, ha kurios mu hai ka theos mu, which means my Lord and my God. He was convinced of that because the evidence was compelling. First of all, we have the primary witnesses. Now an equally powerful witness, even perhaps greater, is uh, the secondary witnesses. You've got to catch this, because every liberal historian, every conservative historian, they agree on something. They agree that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of 1 Corinthians in about the year 52 AD. And here Paul says in chapter 15, I'm giving you what I received, he's speaking about what the apostle showed him and told him, but catch this, what the apostle, hey, we're into the truth here. We're into truth only here. Truth only here. So if you want the truth, you've chosen the right place to be this afternoon. And you'll notice what Paul says. He says, indeed, that what you do, he says, uh, I am telling you that Jesus died and rose from the dead, he says, and that he appeared to 500 brethren, most of whom are still living. Do you get the, imp do you get the import? No. What he's really saying is, well, Why I'll go a little matter? slower for those of you who aren't getting it. Can you the start fact over is, from the beginning? The fact it's is so that there are 500 lost. people, and Paul is saying, go ask them and they will verify the resurrection. They saw Jesus too. 
As a matter of fact, some of you who are hollering back there, if you had been there during the time of Christ, you'd have become believers too. Because the evidence is so compelling that indeed they would have believed in Jesus. You go, Erwin! You can trust the gospel. They don't have the body. He is risen. He is risen indeed.